I'm going to I'm going to get started and I'll just offer a prayer to begin with and then I'm trying to talk as loud as I can. They're recording it as well, so you guys will get to watch it in a minute. Hopefully. I'm going to pray to start with uh, Father, we do uh, welcome you. We thank you that you're here. We pray that you offer peace to this family in the midst of their mourning. We pray that you offer um, hope in the midst of their wondering. We pray that you give them love in the midst of their grieving. God, we are grateful for this saint, and we celebrate her life today. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Um, I'm going to introduce myself to everybody. I know some of you know me as uh, T Pastor Tim Taylor from Hope Church in Grand Haven. Rusty calls me coach uh, because I got to coach basketball for many years, and every time the gym was open, Rusty was there helping out. And, and so, Rusty, it is an honor to celebrate your mom's life. Um, today I get to lead us all really in what I call a wrestling match of our emotions. Um, a, a wrestling match for your, your mom, your wife, your wife of 73 years. Um, and, and, and for those that are here, an aunt, a friend, a sister, Mary Hagen. I say funerals are a wrestling match because uh, they're a wrestling match of our emotions. And many times the things that we're wrestling are the same emotions all at once. Uh, it, it's so good and so hard that we laugh and cry oftentimes at the same thing. We laugh because they're great. We cry because on April 7th, Mary took her last breath on this side of heaven. And so for us, we cry because they're the last memory that we have. And from what I've gathered from, from everybody, I've gathered that they're good memories. I'm not sure if I ever got to meet your mom. Um, I'm sure I might have at a sporting event because I've gone to, to many of them. And from what I've heard, everyone that she could be at, she was there. Um, but, but when Sandy asked me to do this funeral, I think you asked me last fall at some point, um, and, and I was hoping I'd get the chance to meet your mom before we would get to this day. But um, normally, under normal circumstances, I get to meet with the family. I get to talk to people. But because of the world that we live in today, I don't get that opportunity. Um, so I, I met with Sandy for a little bit, and we talked about your mom. And then I did what I don't often do. I, I go to online. I went to the, the message board to find out what people were saying about your mom. Um, and I don't do that often because there, you guys can attest, there's not always a lot of things that people say, uh, things that are really that important. Uh, but what I, I read was really so many people that were impacted by her life, were, were impacted by the things that she did and were loved by her. Um, and this is what I learned, and I, I think it's true for, for who she is. I learned that she loved Jesus and she took serious the charge that he gave to her to take care of all the people that are around her. I learned that she was the blanket lady. Uh, you had mentioned that and I heard other people talk about uh, the blankets that she had made for numerous people, organizations across the community uh, to, to do as fundraisers, to help out, keeping people warm. I'm sure many of you have a blanket that she made that, that will keep you warm every time that, that she wears it. Uh, but she, she did these things. This is what she was known for. This is how she took serious the charge to care for people in need around her. She also committed a lot of her time to help out with the Special Olympics, raising money to support those that, that were a part of the system and also everyone that helped those that were competing. She volunteered really however she could. She really did whatever she could to help anyone and everyone. It didn't matter if she knew you or not, she was going to care for you. She was a friend to everyone in this community. She always had a pot of coffee ready to go for anybody that, that wanted to have someone to talk to. Coffee, from what I heard, it was an important part, and not just from you, but, but heard online. Coffee was an important part of this family. 
In fact, I heard it was kind of the joke that if you don't like coffee, you may be adopted. So um, hopefully all, all of you guys like coffee. I, I, I feel like maybe I, I should be a part of this family because I love coffee too. But the more that I, I read about Mary and the more that I heard, I, I, it became clear. Mary was loved by all and Mary loved all. If you did something wrong, and, and, and again, I just know Rusty better than anybody else in, um, in the family, and I can't imagine that Rusty ever did anything wrong. Uh, um, yeah, I, I know, but, but, but if you ever did anything wrong, Mary never had a problem in saying what you did was wrong. She would call a spade a spade, but at the end of the day, everything was washed away. She, she would start over again and would support everybody. Uh, Mary really, really was a cheerleader in life, but, but a cheerleader for, for everything Bucks. Um, as I said, I wore the Bucks coat today to honor her. This is who she was. She was always there, always supporting others, always supporting family if she could, but, but she was always supporting those that were we're wearing the Bucks colors and doing whatever she could to support them. This is who Mary was. Uh, Mary was never trying to draw attention to herself, though, when she went to these things. In fact, I, I, I believe she was trying to do it in a way that was never meant to draw attention to herself. But the funny thing is, the, the more she tried not to draw attention to herself, I think the more attention she got. As, as I shared with people in the community, on my staff, on my board, at our church that I was doing Mary's funeral, everybody knew who Mary was. Everybody offers their, their grief and their support of, of you in this time of tragedy, in this time of grieving. They speak about how much they'll miss her, how much every buck will miss her because that's who she was. I think she got it right. I, I, I think, actually I know she got it right. Always thinking of other people first. Caring for those in need. In Matthew 25, Jesus was telling his friends about uh, the future that Mary is getting to live right now. And, and that's the truth that I want everyone to know. The, the, the truth is the reality of where Mary's at today. That the fact that when she took her last breath on this side of heaven, she really began to live the life that we all will long to live someday. Live in the presence of her Savior. But, but Jesus was talking about the future that, that she gets to have. And in Matthew 25, Jesus speaks about caring for those that were hungry, caring for him actually when he was hungry. Uh, giving him something to drink when he was thirsty, putting clothes on him when he was naked, visiting him when he was in prison. And the people that were hearing this questioned him because they never knew that they had ever visited him, never knew that, that, he was do, that, that they had cared for him at those times of, of need. But what Jesus said to, to them is that any time that Mary did that, cared for someone who had a need, gave clothing or coffee to someone when they needed it. Uh, we, we got the sun right now. <laughs> any, any time that she was doing that, she was in fact doing it for her Savior. And, and as Jesus continued to say in verse 40, he says, Truly I tell you that whenever you did one of these for the least of my brothers or sisters, you did it for me. And then it says, Because she's done these things, Mary has heard her Savior say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom of heaven, prepared for you since the creation of this world. So I want to repeat to all of you what Jesus said to Mary, what Mary has heard. Welcome home, good and faithful servant. The Lord has prepared a place for you, has a prepared a place for you since the beginning of time. Welcome home. I'm going to pray and then I'll do the committal and then we'll conclude our service and our time together. Father, we do grieve and celebrate at the same time. 
we grieve for the memories that we have. We grieve for ourselves, knowing that they're just memories at this time. But God, we get to celebrate that Mary's in your presence. We get to celebrate the life that she lived and the memories that we get to have. We get to celebrate the people that she's helped. We get to celebrate a life that we can model and follow after and give you glory in the midst of it. God, we love you. We're grateful that you don't tell us to stop crying. In fact, you tell us that you'll hold all the tears that we have in a jar and care for us in the midst of our grieving. So God, I pray for care for this family in this time of grieving. I pray for hope for a day to continue to see her again. I pray for peace in this time of trouble, and I pray for joy in this time of sadness. Jesus, we love you, and we're grateful for the place that you prepared for Mary and for us. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Almighty God, into the hands we commend your Mary in sure and certain hope of resurrection to the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This body we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors and their deeds to follow them forevermore. Amen. My prayers for all of you. And I look forward to a time when we can grieve together. I am sorry.